Greetings, Church. It's uh, Kevin Duclaron, and um, I am today is uh, Friday, the fifth uh, of April, two thousand twenty-four. Happy Easter! I am right now at the downtown uh, Portland Library, and I believe I'm under surveillance. Um, surveillance from Doreen. Um, I guess one of the work, not workers, but one of the participants um, kind of gave, gave me an eerie feeling there. I was about to ask for a flash drive and uh, he was standing there and I wasn't sure if he was standing there to prevent me from getting one or spying on me from getting one. I'm not exactly sure. See, somebody was just there a few minutes ago. So there's, I sort of feel like I'm under surveillance. I'm being spied on. I don't know who's spying on me or why they're spying on me. Um, let me rewind the tape here. Um, I, uh, I'm still getting hits. Um, I'm still getting bashed in the head. Uh, I went to see the uh, doctor on um, in the beginning of the week and I was given some ibuprofen uh, for the uh, headaches and also for the, the nosebleed. Um, I think I have a laceration um, in my nose, a cut. I, I'm not sure how deep every time I'm in there, they, it's bleeding. So um, somebody is either sticking their fingers with their long nails and scraping it um, and then leaving it so that uh, the blood dries up and it feels like boogers or it's a cut with a knife, the knife that I had found in the black bag, which I threw away um, at the post office today, earlier uh, today. Uh, and if it's not that, then it's coming from, the blood is coming from the bashing of my head. And I know that Gabriel um, likes to chazetet, as she says, beat me in my head and make my head bleed. Her and I are. We're enemies, we're not friends, you know. We were never mother and son, we were the complete opposite. And I accept that today as a 52-year-old man. Um, yesterday I would, I would have wondered, but it is, that's what it is, that's just life. Anyway, um, I'm gonna make this real short. I don't wanna be here for 10 hours talking to you. But point is that um, the satanic community acted weird today when I went to the gym to try to make a payment. I'm not sure what that was all about. And of course they came out in the, in the community. Um, I don't understand Satan. I don't understand why he's taking the position that he's taken. And I don't try to understand him. He's way beyond me. Um, he confuses me, <laughs> you know? He's one of those angels that he's like, something's wrong with that angel. But anyway, um, afterwards I went over to um, the police station because I had to um, update them on the fact that I'm still being physically assaulted um, at nights when they're you know hitting me in the back of the head and it's never in front of the staff or actually I take that back sometimes it is in front of the staff and the staff don't say nothing um, I'm not sure why um, there is maybe what I explained to you later on will, will, will make sense anyway this is the medication that um, I was given by the doctor, and it's uh, ibuprofen, 600 milligram tablet. As a matter of fact, I'm having a headache right now, and I just had lunch, so this is a perfect, and this is some coffee, so this is a perfect opportunity to take this. To take away the pain that's in, that's in my head here. Um, I don't know what other damages they're intending to do to me, but this is one set of meds, and then here is another set of meds. This is out of all the complications, all of the hits, all of the, everything that they're doing. You know, you know this bottle, right? Uh, this is the new one right here. Anyway, um, that's that. Um, so I went to the Justice Center, and I, they're doing some work in the uh, area there, so... I haven't, I wasn't able to give a complete report inside to uh, the desk clerk. Um, the man's name is Hector. For whatever reason, he reminds me of a uh, sort of like a Mark Rodriguez, Gabriel Franklin, and a Max Henry. 
in his face right here is a, and I told him he, you know his arms here is like a, um, a Mark Rodriguez but his face here is um, is like a, a Max excuse me Max Henry now when you take that back to uh, Windsor that is probably the queen and um, I'm not sure if it's the firstborn or if it's uh, somebody else in the family but this guy, I think he's a Spaniard, and he works there. Um, I went in to give him this card, this case number here. This is the case number, and this is also the card for the officer that um, I spoke to. I don't know if he took it. I don't know if there's a report attached. Um, it goes back to the, the piercings, the, the sexual assault, the physical assault, the bashing in the head. And also, remember I had told you that my... Uh, my um, my uh, Washington uh, driver's license had not come in. And here's the new uh, license right here. And um, it's the, the expiration date, 2030. So I did receive it. And um, so I've reported it to Hector. This is, this is the card that he gave me uh, back on 328. And um, this is, again, the card that I had gotten from Alexander Quinslin. This goes back to 221. Um, the incident was 215 when I was given chlamydia. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but it seems as if these people, I mean, here we go again, 2024, and there's no resolution. These people do not want to put an end to this nonsense and to this nightmare of hits coming out of Gabriel, coming out of Windsor, coming out of the clan. Why? I'm not sure. They gave me back this, but they didn't give me back all of my mail. So I still have mail that's missing, okay? Um, the state, this, um, the state of California, I'm not exactly sure what they're doing. I just got an email from a Ridgeway um, apartment when I was down there uh, last year, I had put in an application and it is, I'm not sure, six, seven, eight months later. Uh, this is this is after I, I left California. I left California in September, actually September 1st. September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Eight months later, Ridgeway sends me an email, I just read it, saying that we've accepted your application, come on over and we'll give you an application. So it's their game, okay? This, 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 this thing here, this thing here, I, I did this, I've already explained all of this. Yesterday I went and um, I started calling, um, I started calling these numbers here and um, I was just on my way to and the reason why I began this uh, this video saying that there's something wrong is uh, when I couldn't get the flash drive downstairs and I sort of ran into into the guy, you know, I have no idea who he is, you know, and uh, he's one of those guys with the tears and the um, markings and you're like, okay, I did something wrong. I'm not sure what I did wrong, but whatever it is that I did wrong, the response of Doreen and um, the response of the police department and the response of uh, the clan or whoever, Grace is in there. I, and I don't want to deal with it. So I went upstairs, I left the desk and I went upstairs to the second floor to the two rooms, 2A and 2B, which are usually open. And in one room, there's an Asian woman and she's just sitting there playing with a computer. She's not using the phone. And the second room, there are two people sitting there playing with their computer, one playing with the computer and the other one using the phone. And I'm thinking, something's not right, you know? Um, normally everybody's outside when they're playing with their computers and they leave the rooms open so that people can call unless there's a meeting of some sort. So I thought that was kind of peculiar. Um, I was gonna use the Northwest P P Pilot Project, this list here. Um, yesterday I had called them and spoken to one of the uh, apartment complexes, Erickson Fritz, and um, the Lord said no, it wasn't me, it was his decision. I guess he knows something about the property. They had quoted me some prices and um, I like the prices that they had quoted. It's affordable for me, um, for a studio and, and a one bedroom, but I couldn't, I have the application, but I can't fill it out. So um, 
what she had communicated to me, the, the woman I had spoken to, the manager or supervisor or whoever, was a continuation of a conversation that I had with um, with a uh, with a, with another woman from William Temple House who had uh, given me um, a tip on narcolepsy. I had asked her for some coffee. The coffee that she had given me is still in here, and I just drank it. Um, she had given me a tip on Adderall, um, which is basically, it's, um, I'll read you this. This is the information here. I didn't get a chance to read it yet. It says Adderall is used in the treatment of ADHD, narcolepsy, and belongs to the drug class, uh, and uh, CNS stimulants. So basically, it, it, it keeps you awake, um, and it's for narcolepsy. So I'm going to check out check to see whether or not the doctor can prescribe this to me so that I can um, take it so I can stay awake and stop falling asleep and then people don't have to bash me in the head and pierce my body to prevent these um, reports and people coming to my bed. So hopefully this will help me. And I thought, um, you know, when I, when I started calling, I didn't know that her voice was going to come back out and that the management also had other information in, instilled in her. And based on that, the Lord says, no, when he looked into the future, he says it's not going to work out. So I'm not sure what the issue is. I didn't ask. So I just trust in God. You know, it's, it's very, it's, it's like walking on pins and needles right now because they are ticking off God. And I'm thinking, okay, well, how is this going to end? This makes absolutely no sense. So anyway, after talking to Hector at the, um, at the desk, um, I had explained to him this. I showed him this poster here. Um, and if you look at the poster, and so this is a combination of what I said to Hector, but also what I had preached outside, okay? And it, what do you see here? It says, give me back my life, hermaphrodites, okay? Uh, what are hermaphrodites? Hermaphrodites are men with vaginas and ladies with penises, from my understanding as a foreigner um, and as a naturalized citizen. Uh, when you look here, it's, it's a very blurry um, photograph of the, the sanctu uh, sanctuary of Grace Community Church. And you have four questions down here, myself, my information, and um, you can look at the four questions up, up close. Okay, those are the four questions that um, I end up asking Grace outside in my preaching. But I explained to um, the desk, the bureau, the police bureau, that, um, you know, I took them back a couple, several years. And what I explained was that from the very beginning, from 72, okay, and you've heard me explain this a thousand different ways, okay, um, this is what's come into mind now. Um, from 72, uh, when I was two years old, uh, basically MacArthur's issue um, began with me, with Melinda's voice in my ear. And the way they dealt with it was three ways, okay? The first way was to bring this guy here, th this bow tie guy here, that's Bob. You'll find him online and he's deceased. This guy here um, in the Haitian community is a Marianne. In other words, they look alike. And I've said this to you before. So this guy here is, um, was his issue back in 72. I was two. I had nothing to do with him, John, this guy, or Grace Community Church. But the problem was the little girl that belonged to the pastor of this church here, the 13-year-old, could hear my voice. So to deal with me, they made me deal with him through the community, the Haitian community, by putting a Marianne into my life. In other words, his face on a younger, a younger version, and I was calling the woman mother, but apparently she was not. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure how this works because I don't have her face. I don't look anything like her, you know? And so this is kind of a bizarre thing for me. You know, I'm, I'm still trying to resolve this issue in this context, okay? So anyway, back in 72, apparently him wanting me to deal with his daughter at a later time, the first thing he put on my plate was for me to deal with him, which is his stumbling block and his issue, not mine, nor Hades. 
So the first thing he does was he made me deal with this guy through Marianne, and Marianne didn't really communicate anything. You know, she didn't, and I think the only thing she, she said to me was, um, if God is willing, and that was it, you know, from what I can remember. And she took me to Catholic Church and um, had my communion, and that was pretty much it. She didn't really make a big investment. I guess they didn't tell her exactly what to do. And she said something about not having an education, and then she changed her position to saying, she does. So that was it. As far as, um, and I had met Gabriel down there um, at that time, but I didn't know who she was or what the connection was between Gabriel and Marianne. I just thought they were uh, workers, you know, they were like maid brigade working for this woman named Julia. I have no idea who Julia was. But anyway, and I didn't include that in the um, preaching nor in my report to the uh, police bureau, but I wanted them to understand what I had come to you know, comprehend about my past, which leads me to all of this today, okay? So anyway, um, the second person that I, that was put into my life was Gabriel, okay, and Dee Franklin, but I focus more on Gabriel, on the fact that she was representing the monarch, the Queen of Wales, which is the issue that you Americans have on this continent back then, um, you know, stemming from the 1700s and stemming from America declaring independence, the whole relationship between Britain and America. And they wanted me to deal with it, so they brought Gabriel into the picture. So Gabriel was representing uh, the British side, okay? Uh, the same way Bob was representing who? Bob was representing Jones University, okay? And dealing with Jones, what I think might have been Jones' issue, okay? I'm not sure, I don't know. Um, and at this point, it's beyond me. And um, what I was told is I'm gonna get judged, killed for this. So I figured I'd give it to you in advance because I don't know who these people are. I thought they were Christians, but there's another side and this is the other side where it has taken me down this road. In any case, um, so coming into the country in 81, so in 70, so 70, 72 it was Marianne. Uh, the woman who gave birth to me, the, fa the mother, I, who is she, where is she at today, I don't know. I think Marianne would, would probably still be clinging that she's the one. But I, you know, truthfully in the back of my mind, I say no, that's not the woman. I'm not exactly sure who the woman was, but nonetheless, that's fine. Um, but I think you need to know and you need to be clarified because of all the years I've been preaching the gospel to you and explaining this thing. Hopefully this is this was the correct um, my correct in interpretation of based on everything that they've given me. So anyway, um, Mary, Gabriel was the second person that they brought into it, and this is all as a result of me being able to hear Melinda and Melinda hearing me. Okay, so these two women came. So then that puts me in the position of um, you know I've lost my parents as a result of it um, at the age of two. Where were they? I don't know. All these years um, under Marianne's roof and under Gabriel's roof, um, accomplishing absolutely nothing as a child. So when I came into the country, they put me under Gabriel, which is fine um, for a little while, but then they got abusive. The issue was brought up by Gabriel for me to submit to service. Um, it wasn't sexual. I think it was the service of um, a subordinate. Uh, my spirit didn't take it and I said no. Um, she herself didn't really do anything about it. She didn't come out of the shadows. I heard it. So both um, Marianne didn't come out in the, in the voice, but Gabriel did. Uh, and so did Melinda. I was listening to both of them. So long story short, long story short, as I'm talking to you, I'm feeling like I'm being cut down on the inside because they don't approve of what I'm saying and what I'm doing here now. Too much explanation. It should have just been a straight submission and then a hit. You know, because that's the American way of thinking. You know, uh, be as, that, as it may, I'm not an American by birth. Therefore, my thinking doesn't go and in, in coincide with these people that are in back there, you know, doing all the thinking and, and masterminding everything that um, all the decisions that they're making for people like me. So anyway, um, so that was the second. The third was Melinda when I met her here on Grace Community Church property. And um, now my issue with her, or the issue I guess ultimately was slavery. You know, I didn't submit to Bob through, through Marianne. I didn't submit to the British through Gabriel when she finally asked me directly. And I didn't submit to John when he asked me to come out as a fag. 
um, or, or was it Dick Mayhew? I'm not exactly sure. Because Dick came out, John came out, and um, I, I was so clueless as to what was going on and what, um, what was directly in front of me, but I didn't know the context of it. So anyway, I left. I had to leave Grace to deal with uh, Romans one in my life, you know, and uh, had to deal with the, with that homosexuality, however you want to entitle it, and not for the purpose of me getting um, a man, but for the purpose of me submitting to slavery and getting an African woman. Because remember, at some point, me and Melinda had to come face to face to deal with the issue of me submitting myself to her, and they don't, and it's not a straight ordeal boy in love girl and girl submits she was 13 years older so that that wasn't it at all so anyway i've been out here for the last 25 years dealing with all of this um and the conclusion is i cannot understand why a pastor would or a community like this would take me through this much misery and pain just to ask me to become a slave you know no on the slavery to bob no on the slavery to to the british and no on the slavery to this man and grace community church why because this is his position my position or the position that they gave me to deal with was romans one right while i was outside preaching the gospel and i said to them i don't understand why would you even bother you know once god removes a person out of sodom you know the burning of sodom and gomorrah like lot you don't go back in you know once god removes you out of that he says come out from among them second corinthians 6 i think 14 to 18 he says you know don't go back in so why would you if god extracted me out of the world brought me to grace community church to meet your daughter um and and to fellowship with you why would you want me to go back into the world and be a homosexual among men that doesn't make any sense you know, once he pulled me, what they should have done was introduce themselves and introduce that this is who he was, or this is who the staff was, or this is, you know, this is the community. And it's not until I come out here in the world that, you know, that's dumped on me, you know, and I'm hearing this and I'm going, well, what am I supposed to do about it now? Um, and my response to them was Galatians 5, 1, um, the Lord says, do not become slaves of men. So, you know, as a result, you know, of all of that, my conclusion was not only to for them to give me back my life and i'm talking specifically to the hermaphrodite community because the matching is if they're men having sex with men i'm supposed to be a homosexual having sex with men does that make sense in other words it redeems them and i'm supposed to redeem them by claiming the life and not claiming that but claiming the life as a homosexual on this side and I thought, no, that's not who I am. That's not what I went to grace for. Um, that's why I stepped up to the pastor's daughter and, and the other women of grace, not to redeem this because I didn't know this existed back then. And I didn't know that's what was going on. But now that I do know and understand, my response was, give me back my life and these four questions. And I'll just say them. I'm not going to go into the um, process of reading them. It's going to take me too long. Uh, and what I heard, well, anyway... Four, four question question one anything you want to confess grace coming from james five sixteen. anything you want to repent from grace uh, coming from matthew four seventeen. anything you want to turn from grace coming from psalms uh 34 14 through 16 and are you really god's new testament church grace or are there tares among your wheat matthew 13 24 through 30 so these are the questions that i asked them i asked them um, to the public I asked them openly publicly and I asked it you know and I and I voiced it to the man behind behind the um, behind at the bureau I'm not exactly sure if he heard I don't think he even heard what I said um, I, I basically just told him to include um, the report what I said here to this officer and using this number here that's in the back right there so anyway, that's pretty much where we're at. Um, the apartment with rosewood fell through. It didn't come. Um, it didn't come out. I mean, I've been waiting all this time, and I pretty much, you know, let them go because I can't keep knocking on uh, Central City Concerns door. Um, I just have to conclude that it's not there. It's not available for me. You got to be a drunkard, you know. And I don't understand this whole drunken thing. They say it's an ADAP. Uh, room for somebody who is overcoming alcoholism and drug addiction 
And I'm going, well, I'm sober, and uh, I'll take the room. And it says, no, you have to be a person. So, you know, you have to be a person that's in that situation trying to overcome. I go, well, but you don't want somebody that way. You want somebody that's clean. And there's, and there's like, well, it, it's sort of like a play on words. It, 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 it sort of it enrages me. It's, it, I don't understand. It's like, okay. Ridgeway is one thing. Now this apartment complex is another. Um, and I have another application that's pending. Um, I'm sort of like number 60 um, on the application. And I have maybe three or four more pre-applications with the list of apartments that's Central City Concerns. So I'm not exactly sure which door is going to open, when it's going to open, how it's going to open. Um, I was going to try to open uh, Erickson's. Uh, Fritz, but the Lord said no, not to go in that direction. This pretty much summarizes, um, you know, everything that I said. I did read them this psalm as a conclusion, uh, Psalms 116, uh, verses 1 through 4, for where it says, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my supplications, because he has inclined my ears to, uh, he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I shall call upon him as long as I live. The cords of death encompassed me, and the terrors of Sheol came upon me. I found distress and sorrow when I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I beseech you, save my life. So pretty much, um, this is where it's this is where it's at. I, I use this psalm to bow out of the the sermon and the update and the report of what's going on. Uh, they're not working with me here in Portland. I did go to the Eastland uh, East, I think East Hill Church. Uh, about two weeks ago, but the Lord is pulling me back and saying no. Um, it's the same thing. There's a Gabriel there, and it, wherever there's a Gabriel, there's Windsor, and wherever there's Windsor, there's the clan, and wherever there's a clan, there are hits, multiplicity of hits. And so he's saying, don't go there. If you go there, you're, you're done. Okay, you're finished, finito. So I said, okay, so we'll do it. We have to do it God's way. I'm learning to trust the Lord, even in his wrath. Be careful of the Lord and his wrath, okay? Um, in any case, this is where it's at, and um, things are a little bit slower than I thought. I don't, uh, I don't know what the future holds, church. And grace, I mean that, give me back my life. You need to repent of all this stuff, you know. Confess to the Lord, repent, turn from all of it. And if you are God's church, you better know who the tares are in your midst. Um, because these guys are, they're not playing with us, okay. They're not playing with us in the church. And um, if you're, if you're going to go in God's direction, cling to this because the warning is real. All right? The warning is real. Anyway, I'm going to stop the, the video machine now and um, pray that God will help me find a, a solid Bible teaching church where I can um, come alongside um, the, uh, the congregation. I don't want to say pastoral staff because I'm not pastoral material anymore not with all of this talk of sex and sickness and immorality and police reports and all of that jazz it just and of course i'm still not married i'm single uh and you know what paul says in first timothy three um and, and you know a man must be above reproach this is not above reproach you know what i'm saying this is not above reproach being able to manage your own household this is not above reproach there is no household there's nothing this is not above reproach all of this you know it's like how are you gonna you don't fit the grain so as hard for and painful as that is i have to bow out at some point right and so i'll be there i'll worship i'll pray and, and like take communion like everybody else but i'm i'm I don't see God opening that door. And I'm not going to try to, you know, kind of pop the door open, you know, so I can put a crown on my head and yay Kevin. It doesn't work that way. You know, 1 Corinthians 10.31. I think we still have it. You remember 1 Corinthians 10.31? This here is what I had outside of the, um, actually inside of the, of the tent. And I still carry it with me as a reminder. So I stay focused. You know, to God be the glory. You know, we do all things for the glory of God, even our Lord. You know, whatever you do, do it 
We do it all for the glory of God, people. Everything. We, re we read this book for God's glory, right? right? We, we name the name of Jesus to the glory of God the Father, right? So everything that we do, we pray, we preach, we establish churches, okay? What is this? This is Portland Christian Center's uh, generosity. Thank you for your... Thank you for... Thank you for your generosity. Okay, so we established good church congregations. You know, went from this church here. I don't know this congregation as well. From this church to this church. You see, God is still working. And there are tears in these churches. And they forget whether you are Grace or whether you are Portland. I haven't spent enough time with these people just to make any comments. God is still calling us to what? To glorify Him. Right? Remember, we, we came out of Genesis. And this is where we are and who we are today, right? So here's three churches in front of you, right? Grace, the, the New Testament Church of Portland, and then these people here. I don't know them. This used to be a, a, the guy that I used to know is gone. I guess he's a missionary or something to a, a Gwanda or somewhere. Anyway, Ethiopia, I, I'm not sure. But in any case, um, pray for me and I'll pray for you. And, um, and then that'll be it, right? See each other. Uh, sometime in the future when you see me at church pray for me okay and I'll, I'll, I'll keep you in my prayer as well uh, father I pray at this time uh, for the people that are watching this video if they have issues with Grace Community Church I pray that they would forgive Grace because Grace is not a perfect congregation of men and women they are uh, a group of people who love you who worship you they taught me the word they led me in Bible study they led me into they baptized me they sent me on a missions trip. Uh, they took me through um, teacher training. They uh, gave me an education in seminary. They gave me my first two pastoral positions. I love grace more than grace knows, but I have to address the issues of sin inside of grace, though I'm outside getting my butt whooped by the pastor of the church. So God, I pray that you would go and send your spirit, your correcting spirit like you sent your judging spirit to Egypt. Go to send your correcting spirit to correct um, the tears that are in there, uh, ripping apart the fellowship and destroying the lives of saints. If there are others in my situation um, connected to grace somehow, I pray that you would release those people and set them free so that they don't end up like McNally and others that have lost their lives and lost um, their families and so on and so forth. God, I pray that you would be with um, Portland uh, Christian Center, that you would uh, meet their, their needs generously um, and help them even now as they're dealing with the uh, sanctuary that needs to be fixed and they're still in the gym. Um, help them as they, you know, they transition over to the new pastor. I don't know who he is. Um, but I pray, God, that you would also be with East Hill Church um, and all of that is going on there. Uh, pray for myself. I never became uh, an established minister um, because of my situation with Marianne, with Gabriel, with Bob Jones, I should say, with Gabriel and uh, the British and with Grace Community Church and the Master Seminary and the LGBTQ and those people that are dealing with the physical, I won't say defect because there's nothing that you have created that is defective. You had a specific purpose in mind for creating those people. Um, I don't know what it is and I don't need to know. I simply uh, pray that you would be with the church as those issues come up, bodily issues come up. Um, people are, are afraid when they see um, things that are different. We read your word and we read about angels that have the faces of lions and eagles and man and bears and we read about uh, angels that have six wings and um, oh, singing holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. We, we read about uh, a lot of these things and we don't know what they look like because we don't know you. We don't know the, your nature and who you are as God. So I pray Lord um, for all of these things. I pray for the city of Portland. I pray for the Portland Police Department and um, the people that are behind the bureau. I pray for the individual police officers, that family that uh, lost their son because he was shot in the back of his head. Um, I pray that you would restore the woman, um, give her some courage. I pray for the police family that has to deal now with their uh, officer who have committed 
uh, a crime, I guess. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they're seeing it. Uh, I pray, Lord, for the individual men that are at the Doreens trying to find housing and employment. Uh, pray that you'd be with the staff, that you will encourage the staff, strengthen the staff as they bring more people in, more men in, who want to drop their load and you know, sit down, have a good meal, and find um, time to uh, look for, for, for housing on the internet or calling or however they're doing it, meet with their caseworker. God, I pray that you would be um, the common denominator for all of us in that place because sometimes we want to pull our hair out, not, not only that, but also to pull out each other's hair sometimes as men. Anyway, Lord God, be with us in the city, um, in this library, and um, help us to remain uh, safe. Be with the COVID victims, um, the war that's taking place in Hamas and Israel and the Gaza Strip, the war that continues to rage in um, Russia versus the Ukraine and the United States versus um, the Middle East and America right now, Lord God, who is seeking for a new president and last and not least lord god haiti who has just gone to the devil and the dogs um be with those people lord uh be with those people because they are in need of a, a new mind if i could take out the mind of the haitian and give them a new mind and a new heart and a new spirit to to walk a new walk and talk a new talk and live a new life i would do it i don't know how i don't have the power and the authority to help these people help the homeless around the world um, not lose courage and and let them seek you in prayer um, let them say that psalms 23 prayer um, as many times as they need to lord god and let your spirit be their guide um, and this i pray in the savior's name amen okay well i don't know about you but i think it's probably time for you to go to prayer and ask god for something when you say all right you guys have a good rest of the month